in my quarantine in Maui. Oh wait, I gotta put on my air phones. It'll be hard for you guys to hear. Okay, there. Aloha! Aloha from Maui. This is my quarantine. This is Wailea McKenna. I'm here for some exercise today. Thought I'd film a little while I was exercising. I'm going to be looking for my fish over here. Oh, that's a big wave. Woo! Under my feet. Beautiful. Feels so good. It's 82 degrees right now. <gasps> That's a big wave. <laughs> They're getting bigger and bigger. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, it got my purse wet. Oh, there goes my bucket. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to move you guys higher. Okay, there. That's better. My bucket and my... Hold on. I like the water, but I don't want my stuff getting wet and I don't want the camera stand flying off because of the waves. I mean, I put it outside of the waves, but the waves started getting up to me. So we're going to do our Revelation study today in the book of Revelations. We stopped because we are in end times and we are the end times church. Hi, aloha from Maui. This is Lady Jesus. And we're going to go back to where we left off, which was Revelations chapter 1, verse 7. Look at these pretty little girls swimming, playing on the beach next to me. Okay, we're going to go, we left off at verse 6. We finished verse 6, and I'm going to read starting verse 7. Behold, oh, the Holy Spirit, is, well, Lord, we just plead the blood over now, over us now in Jesus' name. We just declare and decree your victory and your favor. And your perfect love, Father, I thank you for your love that encamps around us. Father, I thank you that we have set our heart to seek after you. We have set our heart to seek after you, O God. We have set our heart to seek after you. We abide in the secret place of the Most High God. We abide in the shelter of the Almighty. He is our rock, our fortress. In him will we trust. He is our deliverer. He is our strong tower. The word of God says the righteous run into you and are saved. And we are righteous through the blood of the lamb. No matter where we've been, no matter what we've done, if we have repented of our sins, we are cleansed of our unrighteousness and we can run into the loving arms of the father and dwell in the secret place of the most high. The prodigal's father is waiting at the, at his, on the terrace, looking for all of his prodigal children to come back to the father. I thank you, father. For your perfect love, your perfect love, your perfect love, your perfect love. Thank you for your perfect love, God. Hi, Angel Hernandez. God bless you. So we're going we're gonna to continue on. And the Lord wants me to tell you, Holy Spirit told me to tell you, if you have any questions about the scriptures I'm reading, please message me or post it here. And I will do my best to respond to those questions either now or within the next couple of days. As we go on, because the Holy Spirit, we got to know the book of Revelations. We're in end times. I'm telling you, God's had me declaring that it's end times for 20 years, prophesying end times. And, and as I've been prophesying end times for 20 years, I, um, people would think I'm crazy. But now I have my friends saying we're in the apocalypse now. Friend, people wouldn't believe me and thought I was crazy. They're like, we're in the apocalypse. I mean, the world starts seeing, the eyes are opening. People are getting it. People are getting it. The climate change, the coronavirus, these are birth signs of end times, if not tribulation. So, people, get ready. We're in for a ride. And uh, get on the bo boat of Lord Jesus Christ, because that's the right ride right now and forever. So, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Ever so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. <clears throat> I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos, 
for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, um, to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned and I see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and his hair were like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. And his feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth, went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. I write these things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this, the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven gold lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. That is the end of chapter 1 of the book of Revelations. I just want you to know that there is a boldness in me. There is just a boldness in me um, for these last days. There's a boldness in me for these last days. A boldness like a lioness who is roaring because the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ, is our leader. He's the head of our pride and he has given us this boldness and courage to roar with him as his people because the Lord is doing a great and mighty thing on this earth and we are not to be afraid. Christians, believers, we are not to be afraid. We are covered in the blood of Yeshua. We are not to be afraid. We are to stand strong and we haven't gotten to the scripture yet, but it's Revelations 12, 11, which says, and they have overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. They did not love their lives unto death. And with what is going on right now on this planet, on this earth, it is time for the believers in God to not love our lives unto death. We are the overcoming church and we are to be in a place of courage and boldness and to not love our lives unto death. We are not to fear death because every believer has eternal life. Every believer has eternal life. And we are blessed to have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I want you to know that we are not to fear death. We are not to fear coronavirus. I mean, what's the worst that can happen to us? The worst that can happen to us if we surrender our lives to him is that we could get sick and live in eternity forever, right? Live in eternity forever because we are not mortal. We are spirituals. We're superhuman beings because we have Christ Jesus living in us. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And we do not have a temporal life. We have an eternal life with the Lord. This dog is, oh, this dog's going crazy right here. Oh, the dogs are fighting. I'm telling you, pit bull too. Pit bull's going crazy. I'm telling you, I'm not too crazy about pit bulls. So anyways, that's just the enemy distracting. Thank you, Father. So we're in Wailea, McKenna. This is my beautiful, tranquil quarantine. Yes, I am the spoiled of the Lord. I am blessed and highly favored of God, and God is so good. I came here uh, to do ministry and to see if I can catch some fish for my fish tank. Because one of my dreams is to put fish in my fish tank, and we have not been able to do that yet. So... I, today I'm not going to get in the water, but there will come a time next week I'll get in the water.
also with my snorkel gear, I look for fish. I'll, I'll share that with you guys too. But going back to the book of Revelations, people of God, it is time for us to be well versed in scripture because not very far from now, the enemy is going to take away the Bible. The enemy is going to take away the Bible. We need to be well versed in scripture. Right now what we're getting is regurgitated scripture because most believers haven't read their Bible from cover to cover. And I want you to know what most of us are getting is regurgitated scripture from our pastors and our teachers. And that way when a pastor or a teacher puts a twist on it, you can't understand that they put a twist on it that wasn't from the Lord. And you're, we are trusting our pastors and our teachers, and most of them are right. I'm not saying they're all evil or wicked. But there will come a time, the Bible says, that well, wickedness will be on the earth. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, I think it's verse 13. I'm going to go there. Second to, oh, ah, I had my sweet little packet there. Okay, it says, uh, Let no one despise your youth. Be and Oh, that was 1 Timothy. Excuse me. wind is blowing my page over. Who's second Timothy, Lord? It's second Timothy, not first. Let me go over to second Timothy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Enjoy the waves for a minute. They came up and it got very high and it got on my purse and stuff. Started taking my bucket. Here it is. It's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, starting with verse 1. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort, and with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, uh, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you will be watchful in all things, endure affliction, and do the work of an evangelist, fulfilling your ministry. We're seeing that now. We're seeing the deception now, both in the bride, in the church and outside. I mean, you see it in the media, but you see it in the church because you see so many pastors who are like, oh, God's going to bless you. You're going to be fine. And not calling people to repentance for our sin. You know, they'll tell you, oh, God's going to make you rich. He's going to provide for you. He's going to protect you and not hold us accountable for our own actions that brings forth God's judgment and God's discipline. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11, the word of God says, don't despise the Lord's judgment. Don't despise the Lord's chastisement, his correction. We as our Heavenly Father's children, when we see correction coming our way, we say, oh, Father, I, I'm being corrected. I repent of my sin. I'm so sorry, Father. I, whether I, if you didn't know, you say, Dad, I didn't know I messed up. I'm sorry, Dad. Or if you knew you messed up, Dad, I knew I messed up. I was wrong. I intentionally did that sin. And I'm sorry, God. I, I, I apologize. I repent. I'm never going to do it again. I'm making a 180 degree turn from that. And I'm going to walk in righteousness. You know, but that's true. That's true religion. That's true relationship with our Heavenly Father. That when we wrong Him, we correct and make it right in the name of Jesus. And we cover it with the blood of Jesus. That's why Jesus died in the first place for our sins. So, anyway, so, but we're finding right now preachers that are just wanting to say, Oh, God's going to bless you. you God's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you with no accountability for our actions. No, I mean, God's grace is real. It's so real. God's grace is real. But His grace comes with repentance. His grace comes because we say we've sinned, Jesus, and we need you as our Lord and Savior. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of our unrighteousness. Make us holy again. This needs to be the word that every believer, not just every pastor, not just every prophet or evangelist needs to be preaching, but every believer needs to be speaking this out loud publicly in their communities and in their circles of influence and bringing all people into revival. This is revival, bringing all people into repentance. When you bring all people into repentance, you're going to see revival. You're going to see global end times revival to the ends of the earth and people all over the world are going to get saved.
because the church is finally going to do that which is right. The church is finally, I'm going to touch, I'm trying to touch the back so you can see the view back, uh, back there. Um, so the church will finally do what we're called to do, which is to call the world's world into repentance and to receiving Yeshua, Jesus Christ, as their Savior and Lord. I mean, this is how we're going to have global end times revival. And all the earth is going to see the glory of God. All the earth is going to see the glory of God. We're going to see the glory of God in revival. We're going to see the glory of God in revival. I'm telling you, the miracles that God has for us right now, people of God, are just spectacular, incredible. And I just see the Lord blessing his people. I see the Lord making his face shining upon us. I'm going to lose <laughs> my juice is going on my phone now. But I just want you to know, I just want to pray for people right now. I, I want to pray for a spirit of truth and a great awakening on this earth. And I want to start off by praying for repentance. Father, I acknowledge before you that we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. Father, we as humanity have broken covenant with you, have broken our ties with you, have walked away from you, have walked in witchcraft and sorcery and idolatry and adultery and fornication and, and spirit of murder. Even if we haven't murdered, we've had wicked thoughts of, you know, we could even say uh, Raka, your word says, if you say Raka, which is calling your brother a fool. And how many of us have not done that in anger, Lord? Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, of our covetousness, of keeping up with the Joneses, of our materialism, of our jealousy, our insecurity, Father. Father, I ask you to forgive us, God, of sinning in our anger. Forgive us, Father, for, for lying, Father God, for deceiving, Father, for stealing, Father. Father, there's been so much sin on this earth, Father. Forgive us of our sin. We repent and we have get, taken your glory that you deserve for being the creator of the heavens and the earth and we have given it to idols and to creation instead of our creator. Father, I ask you to forgive us, Father. We, Some of us have given it to demons as we've uh, fallen prostrate, Lord God, before idols on this earth. Lord, I ask you to forgive us, Father. We humble ourselves before you and we acknowledge our sin, Father. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that there would be revival on the earth. I pray that all will repent and humble themselves and pray and seek your face, Father and that you would bring healing to our land and revival to the nations in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every single person watching right now. Father, I, I, I believe they have set their heart to seek after you, Father, as it says in Psalms 91. That Psalms 91 covenant is for he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. It's for those who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. It's for those who have set their heart to seek after you, Father, and made you number one priority of, in their life. That you are their protection. You are their provision. That you are their strong tower. And I pray for those people right now, Father. I pray for everyone watching. I pray that they will set you on high as their number one priority, that they will look to you and be saved in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray you will protect them, cover them, provide for them, keep them from all harm in the season, Lord God, in the season, in the season of judgment, that they would be under the covering of the blood in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You know, I just have to tell you, in John chapter 14, you guys hear me say this a lot. It's one of my favorite scriptures, John chapter 14. And it says, he who dwell, excuse me, it says that Jesus says to his, his uh, disciples, he says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans when he tells them he's going to go soon. And, and uh, he says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And when you get the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens. That's for every disciple, every disciple, every follower of Jesus Christ, every disciple of Jesus Christ who's walking in intimacy and obedience with him has the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit tells you what's going to happen before it happens. It was the Holy Spirit that said, move to Hawaii. And it was the Holy Spirit who told me in, on February 24th to go into quarantine before there was quarantine in the United States of America. I, I think it was even before it became a pandemic. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. And... Um, and I tell you, I have so much supplies in my house. The Holy Spirit said go into quarantine and he had me going and buying supplies, toilet paper and food and water and everything that I needed 
to live in the secret place of the Most High, to live in the secret place of the Most High, and to be completely provided for and be protected, to be completely provided for and protected. I got to tell you, when you hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, you end up in a place like this during quarantine. When you're hearing God, when you're turning off that TV, you're turning off everything and saying, Father, I make you my number one priority. Our good shepherd, he leads us along paths of righteousness, green pastures and still waters and he restores our soul. That is his promise. When we make our shepherd number one priority, when we're the sheep that are right by his feet, you hear him the best. I got to tell you, if you're the sheep that are right by the feet of the shepherd, you hear him the best. When he makes that call to the sheep and says, let's go, you're right on his tail. You're right beside, you're right beside your shepherd. And you can hear him so clearly say, okay, we're going, Jane. We're going, we're going. And he says, we're going, okay, now we're moving to uh, sell your house. Now we're moving to Hawaii. Wow. Okay, Lord. Okay. I don't understand it. I don't get it. In fact, I have a law degree in California that I spent years getting and years practicing and making a ton of money uh, through that law degree. And I can't practice law in, Cal in Hawaii. And the Lord said, hey, we're leaving that there for now and we're going to Hawaii. And so, and in fact, when he told me to rent, this is my personal testimony. When I was here in November, I shared my testimony at the last video and I kind of messed, tweaked the video. So I had to turn it off and turn it back on after I set up. So if that video isn't right, I'll, I'll, I'll re-explain it. <clears throat> but when God had me here for a temporary 30 days in November in Hawaii, mapping the, the islands, it's, it's just so fantastic. I mean, I, I, this just, I can't even, it blows my mind. It blows my mind how God brings you and redeems your life and protects you. And he takes you. You know, in, in Psalms 91, it says, I have set him on high. Like when, when you set your heart to seek after God, he will set you on high. That means he takes you high above the judgment. He takes you high above the negative circumstances and he puts you in a high place where the problems can't reach you. I, it's so amazing how God is so amazing in that way. I, it, it's, his word is true. Live the Bible. You're going to see the miracle hand of God work in your life when you live scripture, when you live the word of God and you put it into practice. You, the Bible says don't just look at the word and walk away like you looked in a mirror and walked away and forgot your reflection. The word of God says when you read the word, put it into practice. Put it into practice. Live the word. Live the word. Live the word. And you're going to see the most amazing things happen in your life. You know, uh, so the way God had me leave, you know, California and come to Hawaii here, I have to tell you, you know, Hawaii of all the states in California, we're right now, U.S. is over 100,000. It's like 102,000 cases of coronavirus. And I believe there's a lot more than that of people who haven't been tested. Maybe because they have minor symptoms. And it's going to still increase. We're still going towards a peak and we haven't gotten there yet. And uh, we'll probably be in the hundreds or two hundreds next year, next week. You know, or maybe by the end of this uh, beginning of April, we're going to have more cases. Unless, unless the nation repents. Unless the nation gets on their feet and says, Father, we're wrong. We're sorry. We repent, forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of our unrighteousness. We turn back to you. I remember when I mapped the United States of America uh, three years ago in uh, 2017, the Holy Spirit told me the whole time while I was driving around, God kept telling me, tell them to return to me and I'll return to them. The Lord kept saying, thus says the Lord, uh, return to me and I'll return to you. And God kept telling me to tell the nation to return to the Lord telling America to return to the Lord. Return to the Lord, America, and you're going to see your land healed. Return to the Lord, America, and you're going to see the coronavirus judgment go away. Return to the Lord and His principles and His righteousness and intimacy with our Savior Jesus Christ. And don't follow after idols and don't walk in your sin. Return to the Lord and see yourself blessed by the Most High God. I, so as I was giving you my testimony, when I came to Hawaii in November and God told me to move here and I said, okay, Lord, he, he, when I went to, came to Maui, he said, I want you to rent and stay here. And you know, I'm, a, I'm an attorney, I've been educated, I've been trained, and I know renting is not the way to go because renting is not an investment. 
you know, it's where you, you spend your money and you don't get anything back except the resources and it's not an investment. And so look at that. I love it. Isn't that beautiful? So, <clears throat> so I don't like renting. Okay. And so I was a little upset about it, but I knew that the Lord said to rent. The father told me to rent. Oh, I think it was the Holy Spirit told me to rent. And so I said, okay, I'll rent and I'll obey. And I obeyed. And he wanted me to rent in Maui. And the way Hawaii's broken down is so amazing. Okay. So not only did he want me to come to Hawaii, which Hawaii happens to be within the last, is, is seventh from the bottom of the 50 states in the United States of the number of cases. We have like 106 cases or coronavirus and no deaths yet. But not only that, Hawaii is broken up into five islands, five islands. And the, and the, and the Oahu is the island with Honolulu is where a majority of the cases in Hawaii are. And the Lord told me two weeks ago, he said, escape Honolulu. He said, escape Honolulu. He, he, he's basically saying that's where the outbreak's going to be. But I'm on Maui, a different island. He told me to move to this island. And this island has 14 cases right now of the coronavirus. 14 cases. I mean, this is the love of my shepherd. This is the love of my shepherd. This is the love of my shepherd. So let me read to you what that means. It's, it's Psalms chapter 23. It's Psalms chapter 23. And this is how it physically works out in our lives. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Like He gave this to me again in May of last year, he gave it to me in uh, end of August last year. <laughs> you know, in fact, I had I have a note here in my Bible. I write little notes right there. See this red note? It says <clears throat> 826 on 828, August 28th of 2019 last year. It says, asked about the house sale. And this is what I saw that the Lord had given to me on August 28th of 2019. I had asked the Lord, Lord, what about the sale of this house or something like that? And the Lord said to me, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I got to tell you, when you hear heed the shepherd's voice, when you stick close to the shepherd and you do what the shepherd is asking you to do, you're going to find that you dwell in the secret place of the most high and that the shepherd leads you along green pastures. Let me show you green pastures along green path. That's what I'm looking at as I'm talking to you guys. I'm looking at green pastures in front of me. The shepherd leads you along green pastures and still waters and he restores your soul. Let me be a testimony of God's faithfulness to you. That if you seek the Lord with all your heart and you set him on high as your number one priority, God says right back at you. God says right back at you. I remember when I first started uh, ministry and God told me to quit my job with the County of Los Angeles as an attorney and serve him full time. And I did and I had to sell my house and, and uh, I didn't have very much money and I just served the Lord. That was my priority. God was my number one priority. And uh, I had debt from my student loans that were going bad and God provided for me. But, you know, I got to tell you, when God called me into full-time ministry and I decided to follow the shepherd, and I decided that's where the shepherd was leading me. The shepherd was leading me into full-time ministry and to stay close to him and to be a prophet to the nations and to operate in the gift of prophecy and do what he was calling me to do. And there are people around me saying, oh, she's crazy. What's she doing? She's ruined her life. Just gave up her job with the county as an attorney and all sorts of stuff. And I said... I heard God, I heard God, and I am responsible for what God calls me to do. You will not be responsible for what God calls me to do. I am responsible for what God calls me to do. 
I can't get up to one day to heaven. And, and when God says, why didn't you do that? I asked you to do that and say, well, God, so-and-so told me not to do it. And God will say, but I didn't tell them. I told you. You're going to be, we're responsible for what God tells us. And what God calls us to is what God's going to hold us accountable to when we meet our creator in heaven. He tells us to be faithful with the little talents and we need to be faithful with the talents. If he calls us to the nations, then we got to go to the nations. The Lord has uh, again confirmed yesterday morning that I'm still supposed to go to Bangkok, Thailand. I was originally supposed to go in June. We had set it aside. We weren't sure, prayed about it. And yesterday the Lord was confirming that I'm still, still supposed to go to Bangkok, Thailand. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And if the Almighty is saying, I'm moving my wing to Thailand, my sweetheart, and I need you to follow me, my daughter, to Thailand to go over there, then that's where I need to go. So people of God, just be in that place of obedience. Just stay, be in that place of intimacy with your God. You know, be in, in that place of intimacy and be one-on-one -on -one with our Savior and when you are close to your shepherd, he's going to lead you into all good things. He's going to lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And he's going to bless you and take you into that place of security. I love you guys. I love you so much. And you are in my prayers. And uh, hi, Pastor Dwayne. Hi, Chano. Hi, uh, Jawar. Hi, Ma Victoria. Hi, Irene. God bless you guys. Hi, Francis. Hi, Maggie. God bless you guys. God, hi, George. Amen. Hi, Angel. God bless you guys. Have a beautiful day. This is Lady Jesus signing out with our Revelation study from here in Mylea, oh, wait, Wailea McKenna uh, Beach in, in, uh, in Maui. God bless you guys. Love you. And may you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. May his angels encamp over you. May he surround you with his grace and his glory. And Shabbat Shalom from Maui. Bye. Lady Jesus signing out.